my crafty friends. Oh, it is definitely Christmas time and I have got some really fun pine cone crafts for you today. All of these crafts are using pine cones that I either got at Hobby Lobby, the Dollar Tree, or even my own backyard. If you are ready for 10 different holiday crafts using pine cones, you've come to the right video. Okay, so we're gonna kick this pine cone crafting session off with some really easy pine cone Christmas trees. So I'm gonna be using two different paints for this project. So I'm starting out with just a dark evergreen color, just green, and I'm going to be painting that onto the pine cone. So every portion of the pine cone that's showing is going to get a coat of paint. I want the entire thing painted green. And once that green paint had dried, then I found a metallic green, and this is by Folk Art, and I painted over all of the green that I had painted with the metallic green paint. It was a little hard at the top, but thankfully I've got these little clamps that I got from the Dollar Tree, which really helped to make it so I could hold on to the pine cone while I was painting it. And I did make sure to get the bottom as well as the top of the pine cone because I wanna make sure everything is green. I don't wanna see any of that brown base color showing through at all. Everything needs to be green. And if I can have it be the metallic green, that's even better. And then I found this really pretty birch print ribbon on Amazon. They do have it at the Dollar Tree, but it's really hard to find. So I did go ahead and get this huge roll on Amazon. It was really affordable and it's a really pretty paper. And then using a Dollar Tree votive candle, I just measured off how wide the votive was itself, the little tea light candle. And then this paper is so awesome, look at this. I'm just ripping it, it stays even all the way down. And what I'm gonna do is wrap this ribbon around that little tea light candle from the Dollar Tree. So I just used my hot glue gun and put a little bit of glue on the tea light candle. And then I just wrapped that birch paper, birch ribbon around the tea light candle. I only did a little bit of glue at a time just until I figured out how good this stuff was gonna work. And honestly, it worked really well. And I will leave links in the description box below in case you are curious about any of these products. So next, I went ahead and put some hot glue on the top of the little tea light candle. And then I just secured the pine cone on top. Just like that. It looks pretty good. So then I had these golden beads. I think they were like a necklace or a strand for Christmas tree decorating, but I just want the beads and I didn't have any. So I cut some of them off of this strand of gold beads. And then using my hot glue gun, I secured the little gold beads to my pine cones. Now Christmas trees. And these are the Christmas trees. Aren't they adorable? This is such an easy craft to do. And I think they look really nice. And I really like the bases with those tea light candles. They turned out pretty good. 
All right, for the next project, I'm gonna use some wiffle balls and some ribbon and some pine cones. And I find it easier to be able to keep that wiffle ball in place. So I'm just using a roll of tape so I can actually put a little bit of glue onto the wiffle ball. And I'm just following the seam that's there because that makes it easier. Then I'm gonna take some of this ribbon and I believe I got this at Hobby Lobby last year. And I'm going to put that around the circumference of the ball. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue the ribbon all the way around the ball. So that's one side. And that's the second side. And as you can see, there are two tails of ribbon that are left. I want to keep those tails long, so they're gonna stay in place. And next I have these pine cones from the Hobby Lobby. These are the small ones. And these were in the fall section, so right now they're like super cheap. But then I just started attaching the pine cones to the wiffle ball. Now when I got to the top of the wiffle ball, I had a few larger pine cones. Again, I think they're from Hobby Lobby. And I just did a line of four of them right across the top, going down the sides of the ball. Using the larger pine cones like this just at the top gives a little bit of visual interest and it helps to fill in some of that space so you don't have to use so many of the smaller pine cones. And if you're curious of what this is, I'm making a pine cone kissing ball. So this is going to replace my mistletoe that I used to hang up every Christmas. Now it's going to be this pine cone kissing ball. So once I had lots of the pine cones in place, then I just moved the ball around and any empty spots, any bare spots, I just filled in with some smaller pine cones. And give it once over, make sure everything is nice and filled in. And then I took some ivory paint. This is apple barrel ivory paint. It's an acrylic paint and I just dry brushed that acrylic paint all over the pine cones. I like that look, it gives it a little bit of something extra and you can kind of tell the difference of the pine cones too with that dry brush technique of painting. And then I took some pine greenery, just little pieces of pine, like fake pine stuff that I had and I just tucked little pieces of that greenery in between any openings that were remaining on the kissing ball. And then for the top of it, I took some more evergreen fake foliage and these are really nice like I guess they are, I don't know what you would call them. They're evergreen and they're like, they're not leaves, but like branches of evergreen. And they really work nice this time of year for all of the evergreen decorating. And I added in a different style of evergreen pieces right on top of that first on either side of the top of the ball. And then I had this cute little snowflake, very glittery. So I broke it up into little pieces and then I just tucked in little pieces of that snowflake ornament to any minute openings that might be there just to give a little bit something extra. And here is the kissing ball all finished. Oh my goodness, I am so in love with this project. It was so much fun and it was very easy to do.
So now I've depleted my supply of store-bought pine cones, so it was time to go out and find some new pine cones. If you are gonna be doing pine cone crafts, it's easy. You just have to find the pine cones. Then bring the pine cones in after you've all collected them. This was collecting after probably about 20 minutes at my house. And then I gave them a bath in water and vinegar. That water and vinegar will help to kill the bugs that could potentially be in with your pine cones. And I don't know if you can see, but there's some dirt in the bottom of that sink. Yep, pine cones get dirty. Now, once I had them all cleaned off, I took them outside just to get off some of that excess water. And then I brought them back inside and I baked them at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for about three to four hours. I did just keep watching the pine cones and as soon as they were opened up, I would remove them. Then they would be ready for a project. So this project is gonna be really fun and really easy. We're gonna make some pine cone flowers. And if you have older pine cones like these, these are pretty old, it, they're pretty easy to kind of rip apart. So I'm just removing some of those little pine cone pieces, but I'm keeping the center intact. And I'm doing this from the top of the pine cone. You don't wanna do it from the bottom. I'll show you something else with that later. But just by removing those top little pieces of the pine cone, you can see it really starts to look like a flower. Isn't that beautiful? Just think what you could do with a bunch of pine cone flowers, something like this. Put them onto a display or into a centerpiece and a very rustic and pretty accent for your decorating. Now, if you want to, you can remove the pine cone pieces. I don't know what they're called but from the bottom. And as you can see, I'm just breaking off the bottom pieces of the pine cone. I'm starting from the bottom and I'm working my way up. I'm going to be using these little pine cone pieces for an ornament that I'm going to make. I saw something like this on Pottery Barn and it was about $15 for one ornament. And I thought, you know what? I bet I can do it for a lot less. So I took a ping pong ball or a table tennis ball from the Dollar Tree and those little pine cone pieces, I just started gluing them to the ball. I just worked my way around that ball with those little pieces of the pine cone. And I started about one third of the way down and then worked my way up until I got to the top. And then I just made sure that that top where you can see the top of that ball is all covered up. And then I flipped the ball over and using my hot glue gun, I continued the process of attaching those little pine cone pieces all around the ball. And I just kind of tucked the pieces down into the previous layer of the pine cone pieces. And I just continued to work my way all the way around that ball until it was completely covered with the pine cones. And if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. And then if you click that bell notification, that will let you know every time I have a new video coming out. So go ahead, click the subscribe button and click the bell notification too but I really wanna be able to see the definition of all those little pieces. So I'm going to use some white chalk paint and I'm going to dry brush it onto the ball. I really like the way that makes each of those little layers of pine cone pieces stand out. And using a little bit of Mod Podge, I just put that on top of the painted area or basically all over that ball of pine cone.
And once I had it coated in the Mod Podge, then I took some iridescent glitter and I just kind of dumped that onto the pine cone ball. I didn't want to waste it, so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the extra and put it onto my ornament. Now, if I was smart, I would have used a little plate for this, but I wasn't. So I'm going to break out my cute little vacuum. I wanted to show you this thing in action. This little vacuum, it's a desktop vacuum. It works so well. So I just wanted to show you how well it works on cleaning up a little bit of glitter. So now I'm going to make a hanger for my pine cone ball ornament. And I just happened to have this ribbon, so I tied it in a knot. Then I put some hot glue on top of the pine cone ball and attached the hanger. Then with my hot glue gun again, I'm just gonna attach some greenery pieces just so to give it a little something extra and I thought it would look really cute. And again, I'm trying to have it look like the Pottery Barn ornament that I saw. I think this ornament turned out really pretty. I'm very happy with it. But I wanted a little bit of something extra, so I found these little red berries and I put those on the front of the ornament as well. And there is my Pottery Barn inspired pine cone ball ornament. I think it looks so nice. Now my mom came over and we decided we are going to make some pine cone Christmas trees. So these are all of the pine cones that we've collected. And these are some tomato cages that we've wrapped in chicken wire. The chicken wire will help keep the pine cones in place. And the first step after making the pine cone cages is you're going to put some lights inside. So if you wanted to, if you don't want to, you don't have to add the lights, but by putting the lights starting inside the cage, you can plug it in and have a lighted Christmas decoration. That's my daughter, Her, she's almost done with her lights. And now my mom is almost done with her lights. You just kind of poke the lights through. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's really worth it in the end. So once we did that, then it was time to attach the pine cones. And the pine cones are attached one at a time using wire. And I believe this is like, I don't know, 18 gauge wire. It's very bendy and it helps to secure the pine cones to the tomato cage. And yes, time consuming because it's one pine cone at a time. Here's my daughter's tree, it's almost done. And now I finally get to start working on mine. So what I'm doing is putting the pine cone directly onto the cage with the wire coming up and then just wrapping it around the pine cone. And then I just cut away the excess wire. And this is a speeded up version so you can see the process a little bit clearer on the inside, but this was my pine cone tree when I was all done with the pine cone portion. But you can see there are some blank spaces, so I did go ahead and add some ornaments. I think it turned out pretty nice. I'm really happy with it. It was a time consuming craft, but in the end it was really worth it because it is beautiful. All right, here is a fun and easy one. So I have this wreath. I think this was like a $3 wreath from Walmart. And since I had so many pine cones, I wanted a pine cone wreath. So if you wanna make a pine cone wreath, 
stand up to things a little bit better. If you use a greenery wreath, the evergreen wreath like this pine one, it makes it a lot easier. There's a lot more surface area for your hot glue to go when you're gluing the pine cones in place. So I started with the larger pine cones, then I worked another ring of pine cones in the center, and then I'm taking smaller pine cones and just filling in any bare spots. Now I wanted a little bit of something extra, so I did take some little tiny ornaments and put those on the pine cone wreath as well. Pine cone wreaths are super easy to make and they're super festive, super pretty, and very popular in the holiday season. This is my pine cone wreath. I think you turned out pretty good. All right, now I have a super easy pine cone craft for you. If you have some pine cones, you can take them out in the garage or outside and paint them your favorite color. I just happen to have a can of gold spray paint and I love the way the gold spray paint looks on the pine cones. It is so forgiving. You don't have to worry about runs or anything. And it seems like the more layers of paint that you add, the prettier these pine cones look. So if you have a little bit of spray paint and some pine cones, you can have instant Christmas decor. And once they're dry, just bring them inside, put them into a clear vase, and you will have an awesome instant Christmas decoration for your home. Now these pine cones, see how closed up they are on the bottom? These are perfect for a different type of pine cone flower. So for these pine cones, I'm starting at the top and I'm only keeping the bottom of the pine cone. Then I'm gonna take some different color paints and I'm going to paint the bottom portion of the pine cone. Actually, I'm gonna paint every bit of the pine cone with the color that I'm choosing. For this example, I'm using red. And once all of that red paint was dry, then I wanted to have a center for my flower, so I used some gold paint for the center. Then I took a little bit of that gold paint and just dry brushed it onto the red portion of the flower. I think the gold gives it a little bit of something extra, and it makes the detail of each of those little pine cone pieces stand out a little bit more. Then I took some greenery from some flowers from another project and I just want to use the leaves. So I removed all of the leaves and then I secured them to the bottom of my flowers with a little bit of hot glue. And then I put them on a Dollar Tree serving platter and I have another instant decoration. All right, now these are some gold pine cones that I think I got from, I don't know, probably Hobby Lobby. But I wanted to see if I could make an ornament that I saw again at Pottery Barn. They look like little acorns. And I really liked the gold of these pine cones. So I went ahead and trimmed the top portion of the pine cone away. I just want that bottom portion. And look at that, they look like little flowers too. So once I had the bottom or the top of my acorns, then I needed something to be the bottom. And I found these Easter eggs from Easter, of course, and I decided these would be really good to be the base. 
And because they were these pastel colors, I did go ahead and paint them with a coat of white chalk paint. And after they were dry, this is what they look like. So then I have this cordage that I got from Amazon and I have this awesome glue. Oh my gosh, I will leave a link in the bottom because that glue is the best. So I took some of that cordage and using my hot glue gun, I put a little bit of hot glue on the, like the tip of the Easter egg. And then I folded over that cord. It's not yarn and it's, I guess it's kind of like a thick string. And I secured it in place with a little bit more hot glue. And then I just wrapped that string or cordage around the Easter egg. Now, once I got it started with the hot glue, it was gonna stay in place. So then I took this amazing like all purpose glue and I just put that onto the egg and then I continued to wrap that string around the egg. Like I said, this glue is very forgiving. It doesn't dry instantly like hot glue does, and it works so perfect for a craft like this. And once I reached the bottom, I cut off the string, and then I tucked it into the inside of the Easter egg and allowed it to dry. And this is what it looks like. Once it was dry, then I took my gold pine cones and putting some hot glue around the outer edge of the pine cone. I tipped it upside down into the egg. So now it looks like a little acorn. And I repeated this process three times. So I have three acorns in total. If you wanted to do this and keep them singular, you could, but I want to have a grouping of the acorns. So I'm going to connect mine all together. So I just took some jute twine and made a couple of bows, one for each of my acorns. And then I put some jute onto the top of the acorn itself. And this is a long strand of jute, probably about at least 12 inches long. Then I took some Dollar Tree gold glitter because I don't want it to look like I just have a piece of jute sitting on top of this pine cone. Then I smoothed that gold glitter down onto the top of the pine cone. And once I was done with all three of them, then I gathered up the jute from all three acorns. And then I tied a knot a little bit higher than the acorns. And then I just cut off the excess jute and there you go. Isn't that adorable? My little Easter egg acorns with pine cones.
All right, now this one is so much fun. I had this pot, so we're gonna make another Christmas tree. So I didn't want it to be the terracotta, so I went ahead and painted the pot using acrylic paints, just black and white. So I put black all over first, then the white, and then I just kind of mushed that paint together to give it a little bit of a textured appearance and different shades on my pot. And then I took some fabric white puffy paint. Yes, I know it's fabric paint, but I really like the look of it on a pine cone. So I wanted this pine cone to look like it had been in the snow. So I took the white puffy paint and I just tipped the edges of each of the little pine cone pieces with the white puffy paint. I think it looks pretty and it looks kind of rustic. Then once my pot was all dry, I just put some hot glue around that top rim and then secured some different evergreen pieces. And again, these are little scrap pieces. This is why I don't throw out anything because you never know what you can use it for. So I would highly encourage you, keep all of the, the evergreen pieces, all of the faux flower stuff stems that you have because look, you can make something really neat with just the little pieces that you might've thrown away. And these little pieces, same thing. They were part of another project, but I thought they would look really nice, giving a little bit of something different to the top of my pot. And then I put a pine cone down in the base of the pot and put a whole bunch of hot glue on it because that's acting as a filler for the top of my tree. Then I took some smaller pine cones and then I just placed those all around the bigger pine cone. And I took a couple berries and put on there as well as a little star. And here is my adorable little rustic pine cone Christmas tree. I think it looks really cute. All right, so those are all of my projects. Out of those 10 pinecone projects, which one was your favorite? I don't know if I have a favorite. I had so much fun doing all of them. And I really hope you enjoyed seeing different ways that you can use pine cones for your holiday crafting. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Just go out in nature and find some pine cones and then you can make some really unique and personalized Christmas crafts for yourself this year.